It's running down my leg. <laughs> Hi everyone, Brissick here, and in this video I'm reviewing a trio of very bright summer Barbie dolls from the 90s called Glitter Hair Barbies that came straight off my childhood catalog pages. I wanted to try that hair gel the most on myself. This is a glitter gel that expired long ago, but I will still test it today, so make sure to watch the video till the very end. This Playline collection is called Glitter Hair, and it was released far back in 1993, and it was produced after the huge success of the long-haired dolls Totally Hair Barbie. I own this beauty, and Hollywood Hair Barbie that I don't have. And it's obvious that this collection is all about the hair play. So you can style the doll's hair, put it in different updos, including coloring the hair using the glitter gel that comes with the set. The collection got its name, Glitter Hair, because of the glitter gel. The collection includes four dolls, blonde, redhead, brunette. All of them have a superstar mold. And the fourth doll is an Afro-American. She has a Christie mold. I'm missing this doll to complete my collection. She's pretty rare, and I couldn't find her for sale. It might be that she was released as a smaller edition because even in the catalog and on the ad pictures, only the three dolls are hanging out together without her. And on the back of the box where you can find the doll's descriptions, she's missing as well. I also want to mention that these dolls were released in two different versions of boxes, and all three of mine came in the same type of box. There also were two release waves. One was in 93, and the second one was in 94. The remarkable part about the TV commercial for this collection is that it featured a famous Hollywood actress, Mila Kunis. Do you recognize? She's only 10 years old here, and she's so happy about the Barbie with her big eyes wide open, and her friend in the commercial is experimenting with the glitter gel, turning her bangs into something that looks like icicles. Also beside the dolls, the glitter hair collection included play sets. The first play set is called Beauty Center. It consists of a makeup table with accessories, and it also comes in two different boxes. A very similar table was produced with the Hollywood hair Barbie before. The second second place that was bigger, a real hair salon and now is considered rare. There also was a large styling head released in this collection. Unfortunately, the styling head's hair is not that long, but the set also comes with a glitter gel just like the regular Barbies. I also discovered that there was a glitter hair Barbie case for sale. It came with an exclusive picture of the dolls. The dolls are depicted holding gifts on the picture like they are going to the birthday party. And inside there's a special compartment for a doll, a hanger for clothes, and a compartment for the accessories. There also were glitter gel refill packs for sale in case you ran out of the gel that is included in the set with the doll. And by the way, the Glitter Hair Barbie collection from the 90s is not one of a kind. There was another Glitter Hair collection in 2010, and also in 2015. But compared to the 90s babies, these dolls are typical glamorous Barbies, and you would imagine that the glitter idea fits them better. But in my opinion, the 90s dolls look more authentic and less one-size-fits-all in their simple skirts and t-shirts, and I'm hooked on that. Besides, nowadays the glitter in your hair doesn't necessarily mean glamorous. I associated even more so with the fashion from the Coachella Festival with their elaborate hairstyles. The doll boxes are tiny and narrow. As you can see, they're very similar in style and in the prime pink color. They're cardboard with the clear plastic window on the front. On the bottom, there's the name Glitter Hair. Next to it, there are the waves that symbolize the hair waves. Take notice of the first letters on the collection's name. They're the same style as the name of the hair gel that comes with the set. Here there's also a picture of the doll with a gel application demonstration. Then there's the Barbie brand sign and the slogan, Colorful Glittery Gel for styling her hair and yours. On the sides of the box, there's the producer's information, the Mattel's phone number. On the other side, it says where the doll was made. My brunette and blonde are made in Indonesia, and the redhead is made in Malaysia. The promo picture is the same and is located on the back of all boxes. I saw it before, and in the picture that is in the catalog, the dolls have green earrings, but here everything is correct, just like in real life. At the bottom it is shown that the gel tube attaches to the comb and how to comb it through the doll's hair and the girl's hair. By the way, the girl that tests the gel is the same on all of the boxes. She has an especially creepy smile on the redhead's box though. And here's the name of the styling gel's brand, and next to it it says that there is a 40 cent off coupon for the gel inside the box. The coupon expired in 95. Okay, one of the boxes still has the clearance sticker on it, so that doll was once sold for $2.54. On the top and on the bottom, there are more Glitter Hair Barbie. Oops, it's a bad commercial song. Totally Hair Barbie! Okay, my dear viewers, let's start to unpack. We need to rip off the top of the box. It's glued. I start with the blonde. I see the coupon inside right away and the one-year warranty. Very detailed instructions on the cardboard card. Here it explains the correct way to use the gel. And let's smell as a tradition. 
I love to smell old Barbie dolls. Let's open the second one. It also comes with instructions and a coupon, and the smell is even stronger than the previous one. Brunette is the last. The same papers inside. No spiders falling out, thank God. Well, hello, pretty brunette. They are really cool. As you can see, all of the dolls have the same uniformed blue background. The set includes a cap, a visor to be exact. There's a tube with the glitter gel and a special comb for application. There are also shoes attached to the back of the box. The doll is not wearing them. And that's about it. There's no brush or a stand in this set. The comb must be instead of the brush. so awesome that I decided to unpack all of the three dolls at once and not one by one because they look just like if they came off the magazine page. Now the same gang is in my rear view and on my shelf. I would like to pinpoint my favorite right away. Imagine that. I just finished unpacking and already choose the one I like more than others. This cute redhead. Her outfit, her hair color, and the quality of her hair made me fall in love with her from the first touch. Maybe because she's the only one out of the three that was made in Malaysia. And her two other friends are from Indonesia. The blonde hair has bad static electricity. The brunette has a little bit less static electricity on her hair, but the redhead has none. The hair has a slightly different texture. I think that you can see on camera that all their hair is shiny. All of it is pretty soft, pleasant to the touch. But the redhead's hair is also very silky. I think the hair strands are thinner than the blondes and brunettes. This type of hair reminded me of the hair that Monster High dolls have, Venus, for example. The same thin hair that I like a lot, how they feel and also how they look. Brunette and the blonde hair is less manageable. The blonde hair got a little bit crinkled in the box as well, and they just feel thicker than the redheads when you touch them. All of the dolls have their hair almost all the way down to the ankles a vast canvas for the art and glitter application. But the totally hair doll has even longer hair. All three of the dolls have bangs. They're full and fluffy, but the ones from China have the fluffiest, just like my totally hair. And by the way, on the box, the dolls have extra voluminous bangs. All three dolls have good hair rooting. The redhead even has something like a part. And when I was checking out the hair rooting, I noticed the strongest smell coming from the blonde's hair. And honestly, not the most pleasant smell. The dolls have soft heads, but I thought that the red Redhead had a little bit harder one. As I have mentioned before, all of the dolls have superstar mold, but they're very different at the same time. It is especially unusual for me to see the superstar mold as a brunette with such dark eyebrows with dark brown eyeliner because it is usually blue or dark blue. The eyes are emerald green. They're so bright and outlined. There are upper and lower lashes, but there's also eyeshadow on the bottom and on the top lid all the way to the brow. She has orange lipstick on her lips, and of course the doll is smiling and showing her white teeth. The cutie redhead simply stole my heart. Look at her. She's so kind, cute, and simply adorable exactly with her red hair. It is not bright ginger, but very delicate bronze color. Very beautiful. This doll has classic eyes. I should say they are blue with the blue liner, blue eyelashes on the top and bottom, and light blue eyeshadow that go all the way up to the brow. She has pink blush on her cheeks and wearing pink lipstick on her lips. Let's proceed to the primary blonde. Her eyes are blue with the blue eyeliner, blue eyelashes, etc. But see how her eyes differ from the redhead doll? The redhead has smaller eyes. All the lines and contours are thinner. So I think she looks more alive thanks to that, and the blonde looks more toyish and cartoonish. Also, the blonde has light pink blush on her cheeks, hardly visible, and her lips are also pink. Write in comments which doll, which face you like better. As I've mentioned before, I prefer redhead, but I like the other ones as well, and the combination of all three is my most favorite. The dolls have simple outfits, but at the same time, they're very bright positive, and mostly feature neon colors. And if you think about it, the outfits are made in the 90s fashion, that style. But because the 90s are pretty relevant right now, the girls look stylish even in the present days. The dolls have identical outfits, absolutely the same earrings, t-shirts, skirts, and tennis shoes. Only the colors are different. The accessories that were separate in the box match the skirt in color, so that the yellow shoes match the yellow skirt, and so on and so forth. And by the way, even though the Afro-American doll's outfit is exactly the same as the redhead's, the shoes are different colors, not the blue tennis shoes. Brunette stands out on her part with her earrings. Everyone has pink ones, and hers are orange. The slightly disappointing part about this outfit is that the t-shirt and the skirt are one piece, but this was the toy for kids to start 
start out with, so we'll forgive this outfit, especially that I think it is not a complete eyesore. The dress is made out of the knit fabric with the contrasting stripe around the neckline and the waist. And if you look at it from the back, the contrasting stripe goes all the way around the back cutout. The dress has a raglan sleeve and also a sticker print depicting a palm tree, sun, and sea on the front. Take a notice that the same palm tree is also featured on the earrings and also on the comb. Mini skirt is covered in sparkles and it is not body hugging, but more like an A-line. And it is stiff to the touch. I have a feeling that the sparkles were applied onto the skirt using the same gel that now has dried out and the skirt became stiff. And by the way, the redhead skirt has the most sparkles. The rest have less and their skirts are a little bit softer. The dress has Velcro on the back and that's how it looks on the inside. Check out her cute underwear. The doll's earrings are pretty massive. Giant palm trees. They look comical, of course, but on the other hand, such earrings are in right now, so why not? They consist of two parts. It's a stud with coconuts and an attached palm tree. The earrings do not come out because there's a stopper there. The earrings are a set with the ring on the doll's finger. It is rounded, delicate, and small, and you can take it off. Doll is wearing tennis shoes, not some kind of luxury shoes. They are basic tennis shoes that everyone is wearing right now. All the girls switched from the heels into the tennis shoes, but Barbie did it back in the 90s. I like them a lot. They're so cute and adorable, made out of rubber. There are shoelace molds. That's how the sole looks. But you know what is funny? The doll's feet are made for the high-heeled shoes, and tennis shoes are flat, so it looks like the doll is standing on her tippy toes. The set also includes a visor. They were popular back in the 90s. I found this M&M picture in this one, but they're pretty relevant right now as well. The fashion is coming back. Currently, the clear visors are especially popular. The doll's visors are matching the skirts. They're plastic, and they stay on the doll's head pretty good. Here's how it looks together with her full bangs. I think it looks pretty neat. The dolls have a standard twist and turn body type. If you want to know more about their articulate ability, you can watch one of my reviews about the 90s Barbie. I undressed the doll just to show you that they have different panties. The Indonesian dolls have textured panties, and the Malaysian doll's panties are white. Let's proceed to the juiciest part. I like trashy stuff and experiments. Here we have three tubes of gel and three combs. The gel and the comb colors match the girls, their skirts to be exact. I want to point out that the gels are in different conditions. The Malaysian made redheads gel is the only one that is in liquid form. So this is the only one that is actually gurgling inside the tube. And there is quite a bit of it, about a quarter of the tube. The brunette doll's gel is also pourable, but still has a thicker consistency. And the blonde's gel is pretty thick, but not completely dried out. By the way, this gel is made by the company LA Looks, Los Angeles Looks. And this brand has existed from 1987, and its products are still available for purchase. And also, this brand is a trademark of the Depp Company. So this gel is basically related to that famous Depp gel that is included with the Totally Hair Barbie set. In order to apply the gel, you need to remove the top and screw in the comb onto the tube. Oops! There's this unpleasant sound that is happening. Okay, let's pick the victim. No, I'm not going to ruin my Barbie glitter hair. I feel bad for her. I feel bad for all of them, and I want to keep their hair untouched. So I will be torturing Barbie made to move. Oh, it's coming out. I'm also going to try the gel on myself. Let's start. The gel is coming down the comb and... No, dripping on my table. Here's what all of this beauty looks like. There's almost no smell, no fragrance at all. I think that all of this stuff needs to dry out on the hair. The gel works. Well, at least we were able to apply it so far, but it wasn't too hard. Let's check on how it looks. That was blue. Let's try applying pink and gold. And judging by the drops of gel on my hand, it is drying out, so it really works. I probably should wash it off my hand just in case of an allergic reaction. Gel is almost gone, so I'm not sure if I can make it happen. Okay, guys, I think this is a lost cause with the pink because it is almost like a jelly consistency, so I don't think it will be able to squeeze through the comb. Let's try the gold glitter and forget about the pink one. Let's start. Wow, the glitter looks so pretty coming out. Listen, the gold glitter looks amazing. Gorgeous. No, I mean it's actually looking very delicate, and I think if we brush the hair through after the gel dries out, it's going to look really nice. 
And after all of these shenanigans, I'm going to apply a little bit on myself. I'm going all out. I'm not wearing all of these hair clips from the 90s for nothing. Let's imagine that I'm one of the girls that got that doll and is enjoying it to the fullest. Oh no, it's leaking on my leg. That's it. I had enough. Enough of the glitter for today. I don't think it's going to be really visible on the dark hair. Anyways, I have this nice spot with the glue here. Oops, with the glitter. Anyway, two out of three girls had the gel working. It was preserved enough to color the dolls and mine hair, and it wasn't that bad like I expected. After a few hours of the shooting, the gel turned into stone on the doll's hair. I think that you can actually almost puncture something with this strand, and it doesn't look that great. But according to the instructions, that's how the final result is supposed to be. If we brush the hair, we'll lose some amount of glitter, but some will stay and it looks way better this way. I'm finishing the video pretty happy and satisfied. I'm the owner of this bouquet, a Barbie glitter hair flower bed. Give thumbs up if you like this video and if you like my experiments with the glitter gel. My gel spot is drying out. The glitter is sparkling. I think I have glitter everywhere on my face, my legs, but it's great. I hope you like the dolls as well. Leave a comment which dolls do you want me to review, which 90s Barbies or any dolls that I haven't unpacked yet. Thanks for watching. I'm glad that you share the happiness of unpacking 90s Barbies with me. Smile more often, enjoy bright colors, love the summer and the palm trees, and always be yourself. Bye bye everyone!